well, kind of do some picture taking here. I don't know how these will come out, but I'm going to talk to you a little bit. Jeff, I'm talking to you now <laughs> um, about this workout. Uh, this is the gadget, as you remember, in Florida, I'm sure. Uh, let me do a, a little bit of the practical workout that I, I might do each day. It's going to be noisy, uh, not production stuff, you know. Uh, and show you how I start out. Now, all these moves, you should understand, can evolve from really what you'd call very easy to what might be somewhat difficult. And that's true of, of each move. There's my dog bumping into the tripod. Jolly boy. So I start usually with a movement like this. Um, what I'm really doing is lifting my body weight with each stride. And I remember you did very well with this in Florida. Uh, absolutely well for, for a first time user. Um, so this works my triceps, trapezius, uh, pectorals, to some extent lats, a lot of you know quad action, hip action, and you'll notice that it's not a straightforward kick, but a kind of a twisting movement. I usually do this with these, the arms elevated another notch, but the machine set this way, so I'll because the sun shines so pretty, I'll let it go. Uh, I may do, in my workouts, a straight five or ten minutes of this, especially if I'm watching television. You know, and the more you bend laterally, the better. And also, you have the option, of course, to make this a hip flex exercise by just lifting knees. While you're off the ground, you get airborne. Uh, a good percentage of each stride is, is made airborne. So you don't understand how much work, how much calorie loss that stands for, because it looks easy. And it really is once you train. Uh, how long you go with an exercise doesn't really make a lot of difference. Up, up to you. Heart's getting its act in all the time. But you can switch frequently without missing the beat, so to speak. Now, when you do that, when you shift from arms to bar, you're, you're shifting from the extensor, big muscles like the triceps and back of the arm, to the biceps. Watch. And the kicks are higher because they're not, they're not, they don't start from this low, low position. You're up higher at the bar, so to speak. And, and here, too, you have the option to do those great hip flexor movements by simply bringing the knee up close to the elbow of the opposite side. I want you also, Jeff, to notice that I'm, I'm doing a great deal of arm work. I'm really doing a kind of a lift with each arm, alternately. So, I lift with my, my right arm. My right arm straightens when my left leg kicks. Same opposite, corresponding opposite works too. And you see that this can get you to pretty good aerobic pitch. I'm probably working at about an 80 heart rate, but most people will be working at 150. And that's because of the training, that's all. It's no, no big deal. But as I say, you can shift from the, the arm beginning. It's almost a uh, warm-up to the bar. Uh, at the bar, especially in people with a little more advanced, you have the option to run. And that running, you see, can be like this in a little old lady or a little old man to something quite vigorous in which you're doing a pull-down 
or pulling yourself up, as, as the case may be, with each arm alternately. Sometimes, when I feel like it, I go for 10 or 20 or 30 straight minutes of this, which can be really quite, quite an aerobic pop, plus you're doing a lot of muscle training. Let me not ever underestimate that, because that's really what the, the whole system's about. It's about using a lot of muscle, what we call second pump, against the first pump, which is the left ventricle of the heart. Uh, and that, those jogs, they can, you can be, uh, do a jog or a kick and a hop. When you insert a hop between each kick, like I'm doing now, that increases the work tremendously. So people who start this the first day who are not terribly well-trained elite athletes are not going to be successful at it. It takes time. But the time is, is what it's all about. The time is the rest of your life. Um, likewise, <coughs> you can jog at the, at the arms. So these jogs are accompanied by push-ups. The ratio of push-ups to leg moves can be whatever you want. It can be a push-up for every two moves. Like a push-up, it's also body flex. So these workouts, these exercises I've shown you so far, are terrific for abdominal muscles. It's implicit abdominal work. You don't sit around and do sit-ups. You're doing abdominal work all the time. Every, everything I've shown you so far has really been implicitly abdominal exercises. There are some that are more explicitly abdominal. There are hundreds of movements. I'm just starting to uh, introduce you to a concept, as well as the device, which is really quite simple, almost ridiculously simple, as you see. Uh, back here, after, after, while you're at do bunches of things like, one of the things I'd better do while we're at is to get this a door out of the way. Here we go. Let's see how we look. I may have to do this intermittently. It looks like we're okay. But you can do things like squats. I know they don't look like much, but here what you're doing is sort of resisting with your arms the downward movement of the, of the butt and then pulling up with your arms out that way, with, with these arms spread, you're doing great deltoid exercise. Deltoid is a muscle nobody develops, and everybody can develop readily. And, and by the way, developed deltoids have all kinds of advantages I could write a whole book about. But that's another movement, which is good for the, the whole low back quad complex. So uh, you're working both back and thighs, but at the same time, not to mention the terrific pop you're getting for, for your delts. A uh, little bit of lab, a lot of other things. Uh, while you're back here, while I'm back here, I should say, there are movements like this, which are not only body flexions, they can be done very slow. I should tell you, you don't have to rush. The reason you don't have to rush is because the amount of work you're doing is so terrific you know, in terms of, of intensity, even at slow paces. There's no point in going faster and probably uh, maxing out too early in your exercise. Either that or, or engaging some discomfort or injury or something that you really don't need. Uh, just think of the muscles involved in such a movement. In the range of motion, every one of these movements, the big things are how much resistance you think into arms and legs and trunk. The range of motion, which is tremendously uh, important because uh, that determines, the code determines the number of muscles you use in the total intensity of the whole exercise. That's how many muscles are being pitted against or uh, as a challenge in the left ventricle. So 
with, it, with a movement like this, for example, this is another standard. This is another filler movement, I call it. It's a bread and butter movement on this device. And you can see what's working just by looking. Great for the flexors uh, of the upper arm, flexors of the, of, of the arm, the elbow, let's say. Uh, quad work. There is considerable abdominal work, though it doesn't look it. The next day, after doing 10 minutes of these first time out, you'll feel a belly, a proper, appropriate, well deserved belly. Uh, this is a move I used to do 10 or 15, and I was just about 50. I've done as many as half hour, three quarters of an hour of this movement continuously just to see if I could. There's no point in going that long if you don't want to, because don't forget, the cardiovascular system gets its ride no matter what movement you're doing of this sort of movement. Now, we have other movements, which are pure strength movements, which aren't done this way, and I'll show them, some of them to you. Uh, we even do a movement like this that works both the flexors and the extensors. See, here is bicep, tricep, bicep, tricep, bicep. Bicep, tricep, bicep, tricep, and then bicep, tricep, as we shift to the other side, again, without, without wasting any time, because we want to keep that heart rate up. But this is working, really, everything in the, in the arm. It's a circumferential treatment of the arm. And you're getting those uh, leg strength and kicks in at the same time, which are also using calories at an enormous rate much more than anything like Nordic track could ever consider even. Uh, here's a move for everybody. Whether you have a bad back or not, this machine could be sold as a back machine if for no other reason. It's the best that money can buy for all sorts of reasons. I'll try to remember to tell you some of these. But watch this. Standing a couple of feet behind the bar between the arms, I simply and into a flex. Imagine how a skier would benefit, or anybody, or a runner, or anybody else would benefit from such a movement done to the tune of two, three, or five, or 10 minutes, whatever you want. You can get very strong doing this. It's also a terrific abdominal exerciser. So it works the belly, the butt, the thighs, obviously, the flexors, the anterior deltoids, the trapezii, the pectoral, you know, go on and on and on. Hundreds of muscles rather than two or three. And that's the point of the game here. And with most of these movements, you can switch the grip. Indeed, you should switch it so that you work a different series of muscles. Once you get really strong at this, it's possible to do it with one. You know. Just showing off. Right. I wouldn't I wouldn't try multiple ones of those first day out, but that should come as no surprise. Uh, again, back to jogging. When you get up to these jogging push-ups to the tune of five or ten straight minutes. You are a very fit person, I can tell you. No matter what your body weight. And this pace, I said, resistance, range of motion, pace. How long you're airborne, how far you move a particular part of your body, range of motion, and how fast you do it in terms of tempo, times per minute. It's interesting about Panex, though, that when you go slow, you can sometimes exceed the work you do when you go fast, and that's because you're working the strength element into the endurance mode. <clears throat> so I gather all my strength while I'm doing aerobics, a little breathless. Uh, so, with these, 
if I choose to go slow, add a more isometric quality to the exercise, so to speak. The VO2, that is the amount of oxygen, amount of calories, the number of calories I'm using per minute, uh, can accelerate, actually. It's a paradox, but it's a wonderful one. So, if you're intent on watching a TV show that's eight or ten feet away, you don't want to, if you do fast movement stuff, it's going to be hard for you to keep your eye on the tube. You can go slow and work as hard, which is a win-win situation. Uh, okay. Now, when you take a movement like these kicks at the bar, let me show you that you can make them harder a number of ways. I can go down into this kind of permanent squat and do my kicks from there. There are other variations like this one. Very slow. But when we measure the oxygen uptake that goes along with this kind of slow movement, you just surprise the hell out of everyone. That doesn't mean that you have to be a, an elite athlete to get involved. You can do. The little lady can do this. She doesn't have to get airborne at all. Just this. We'll get her more exercise than her walks are getting her now. I can guarantee that. I can guarantee it because we've measured it. Not once, but dozens of times. So even this is good exercise. As you begin to think into the exercise by adding pull-downs. Like, for example, in the palm front position, or the overhand position. See, now I'm really working my arms and shoulders hard. The kicks look precisely the same, you know, and indistinguishable from the ones I was doing before, but essentially, I'm really adding a lot of arm work to the tune of two or three extra calories per minute, for example. You know, multiply that out over a year, and you have you know, 10 extra pounds of weight lost just from the arm work I'm adding. Don't have to add it, can add it, can add it sometimes, up to one's whim. Uh, now that's just, so you can take any one of these movements and convert it into a whole exercise, a whole, a whole workout, I should say. That, that's, that should be obvious, and, and I've done it hundreds of times since this prototype was developed, which is almost 10 years ago. Uh, you can work on the airborne aspect of your triceps by doing what we call scissors. Now, I told you that the, the Panex manual contains literally, you know, dozens and dozens of, of various movements. You don't have to know how to do 50 movements to, to get terrifically fit on Panex. If you do 6 or 7 or 8 or 12, well, you're, you're in business and should stay that way for the rest of your life. Actually, you should continually get better. I've noticed <coughs> that by all... Uh, all the lexicons. I'm better at exercise now than I was 15 years ago. Even 10 years ago, after I was I was still young, and and, and did more exercise per day. Now, in a half hour to an hour, when I really don't into it and love it, half hour is enough to keep me as fit as I am. Which is the texts tell me in the in the hundredth percentile, even for 20 year olds. I can stay in that kind of condition on a half hour a day. Uh, if I want to lose an, a pound of weight, all I have to do is add a few minutes to every day's workout, and I'm there, home free. It's easy. Uh, one of the nice things about weight loss, by the way, when it comes to these movements, this machine, this exercise, this theory, uh, it is rewarding to lose weight. It's tremendously, every pound you lose makes it more than a pound easier. In other words, the facilitation of your exercise is not, not linear with the amount of weight loss. It, it extends far beyond that. So when you lose five pounds from working away at this machine, uh, you behave like someone else who might have lost 30 pounds at their exercise. And that's because weight bearing and weight sharing so central to this whole idea. Uh, let me review again to you that uh, 
Well, the, while the weight around the waist is difficult to lose, and there's a lot in the literature, and the man magazine's uh, literature is loaded with it, um, I'll put this kind of exercise against uh, anything and any combination of, of machines that you, that you can buy at any price uh, in, in terms of, of making a strong abdomen. And then, of course, losing weight is a separate problem because whether anybody can see your, your the so-called uh, insertions or uh, inscriptions of the uh, rectus abdominal muscle, whether you can see them or not, whether you got, you know, washboard abs, it's not dependent on how strong your abdomen is, but how much fat you got off the muscles that you're, you've already trained. And that too should be obvious. Uh, you know, jumping, just simply jumping at the bar is an exercise that, you know, most people can do two or three of them when they're finished. Once they convert, which means to train from a strength exercise, which does a few reps, to one that you count in minutes, I your hope. So there's an exercise which is, <coughs> gives power, explosive power to the quads, is obviously an arm exercise. And then there's a double whammy because on the way down, and by the way, you hit the ground easy so you don't hurt yourself because you're slowing the rate of falling to earth by, by your upper body musculature. So, so it's a very gentle, soft landing. But I'm also working hard in pulling down, see? And pulling up. So on both the up and down strokes, so to speak, you're working these arms and making yourself exceedingly strong, I'm sure you uh, I, want, I was telling you about a stretch the other day. Uh, I want to show it to you before I forget it. There's lots of stretches to be done on, on Panix. Uh, here's a simple stretch, for example. In which you stretch neck, abdominals, um, lats. You can see how you're pulling and stretching them. The business of stretching from a bar hanging which has been known for hundreds of years, now can be combined as an all whole body stretching uh, system. You know, not just a couple of exercises. But there are many, many things you can do. And I'll show them to you, either on this paper or subsequent ones. But the one I want to show you in particular is for people who either have a good back or want to have a good back. And, and notice that they suffer from morning backache because their body gels. I'm, I'm typically like that. And I developed this <laughs> exercise the other day, which is simple, but watch. And first of all, I just simply hang. Now I notice, you notice I have my feet on the, the crossbar, on, on, on the, the front leg assembly. And I'm pulling outward and stretching all the stuff from, really, from my ankles to my wrists. And pull your head down to stretch, flex your neck. Now here's the e interesting part. I'm now going to push my hips forward. Now I'm in front of the, of the bar, really. And I hold this position. You can see that it's a tremendous isometric strength trainer of the quads and the butt, the buttocks, the glutes. And you hold that position for a little while. And I want to tell you, if you start with certain kinds of sore backs that come from a lot of hard uh, trunk work like I do, that'll, that'll just stretch you out. In a couple of minutes, the pain's gone. And not only that, but there's a, there, it's not only a, a kind of a erase the pain kind of motive, but you're really getting considerable strength almost something like what a weightlifter does when he does heavy squats. Uh, and don't discount the, uh, the abdominal, the rectus in this particular exercise, because they, they, they know they've been at it next morning if they haven't done it before. I try to get up on my toes. Makes it harder, it makes it a calf exercise also. Uh, there are other stretches, for example, if you want to stretch your hamstrings, 
The beautiful part about this, you can stretch your hand and fingers out this machine, but with it, you can press, you can press the strength of, you have control over the arm so you can make it harder or easier as you see fit. There's that word again. I should mention, a lot of people talk about hand weight exercise, you have to be careful not to, you know, to hurt yourself by doing random movements. Well, what should really be true is you should try to get yourself so no random movement bothers you. For example, in this particular uh, kick at the bar exercise, I'm now jerking, doing exactly what the textbook says I shouldn't do. I'm jerking my shoulders back. Instead of throwing, this is the reverse of it. took a picture of it and ran it backwards. It would look like I'm throwing. But that is an immense exercise and the kind that allows me you know, to throw the ball as hard as I can, you know, rapidly for an hour without ever getting an ache in a muscle next day. It's, a, it's, it's almost bizarre. But Panex teaches you to, to do a lot of things that no other exercise will because most exercise machines that you buy, for example, programs, are devoted to a single a single movement. And no single movement can get at all the muscles. What we do <coughs> is get at all the muscles, but we get at each of them multiple ways. So it's literally uh, dozens of ways that each muscle becomes involved because of what the, what the old Gestalters call uh, Gestalten. It is the mix of movements that counts. And, and if you you break that gestalt, it's a totally different exercise. You add something to it, it's a totally different exercise. And that's why people who are you know, a little inclined to, to be adventurous in, in the motor sense can have a ball with this because nothing you do on it can really be wrong, especially uh, if it feels good. If it hurts you and you continue to do it, then there's something wrong with you. But you see, this kind of movement that looks like I'm resting, and I, I really feel like I am, I can do this all day. For, for newcomers, it is hard work because they haven't the ability to share their body weight between upper and lower body. And I can change the ratio of arm to leg, uh, how should I say, involvement, to suit my whim. If some days I feel like I'm, I'm a, a wimp with no upper body, I work hard at it. Other days I feel like my, my, my skinny legs are too skinny. I, I can make myself leg strong just by thinking into it. By doing, you know, this kind of stuff. Or, or even one-legged squats down here. Okay? We haven't begun to scratch the surface, but uh, I'll run through it. What a typical workout might look like. You know, we would do one. One thing you can do, by the way, you can do two minutes of ten exercises each. That's twenty minutes, and make that your workout. Or uh, you can go do two minutes first time, one two minutes the first time, and then do three minutes of each move the second time as you get more warmed up. Well, if you have twelve minutes. Or, I'm sorry, twelve exercises. You do them th three minutes a piece, and you'll soon. Everyone who does it be able to do that readily. You're into a 36-minute exercise, so you're doing more than most people. And there's no reason not to do it seven days a week unless you don't, you want to rest on the Sabbath. Uh, every day is an exercise day for me simply because I don't feel whole without it. And that was never true of me until I got into panics, by the way. Uh, I always did exercise because I thought it would save my life. Now I'm not so sure it's saved my life. I don't even know. I can't. I read all the literature. I'm not sure, but I know that that movement is a part of my character structure, and I got to believe that there's a certain percentage of people uh, out there in that great maw of the public who feel pretty much the same way about it. If they don't now, they would after uh, some training will allow them, allow them to actually see firsthand what the benefits are. Fitness movement goes lousily in this country. Mostly because few people have ever been there, so they don't, they don't really know what they're missing. Sound reasonable? Uh, I have to 
do one of these for you. One of, one of them that, that uh, my grandson taught me with a bunch of his classmates who were doing a panic session one day, it's something that goes like this. You just kick up. Then, excuse my butt, but then you come down slow. That's slow enough? I gotta tell you, the kids that did it, except for my grandson, of course, they just fell down. Nobody could go down slow because they don't have the abdominals. Even, you know, lusty little preteeners or, or, you know, wonderful. But they have no strength in their abdominals. You don't need any of these fancy, sometimes silly, gadgets for, you know, thigh mastering your way through to uh, glutes and the abs of steel. So far I haven't seen anybody like that. I don't see them at the, at the seashore either. But if you want to become reasonably hard-bodied, have a terrifically well-developed circulatory system, if it's in the card screen, be able to control body fat muscle ratio better than anything else. Better than anything else. No question about it. No contest. Then this is the kind of stuff you want to be doing. Uh, I miss I miss these. By the way, I've been working, as I said, with the arms up higher, and that's better. I, the next piece of tape, I'll do it that way, because I can go down more deeply between the arms when they're a little higher. Uh, so the machine, as you understand, you will, when you get your copy of the machine, is, is adjustable this way. And for tall guys, we have a longer bar piece, this piece, the longer one piece. goes up to your six foot six. And Michael Jordan, they had no trouble with it. He'd be a great celebrity, by the way. <laughs> as would uh, David Robinson. Wow. The Admiral. Uh, see, it's hard for me to stand around this thing without making use of it. <laughs> uh, there are movements, I call these toss acrosses. You know, when I do that, I'm really doing a press up uh, with one arm. Doesn't look like it. That, that's what I'm doing. I'm tossing myself across with one arm. Can't do it your first time. But you can't do a few chins the first time either, or this kind of chin. See, these are done with really out any effort. Except that I'm out here sweating. For you, Jeff, for you. Uh, Here's a strength movement that I defy anybody to do. It was learned on this machine, not by lifting uh, great poundages, like my friend my, Marty Gallagher does. Just one second in the country at the uh, National Powerlifting. Try this one. Next time you feel like it, you put your legs out in an L and then pull yourself up. Can't do it because I'm pooped from the exercise. but. That's the general idea. I'm trying to think of another movement. You can do moves. Oh, here's one you'd like. Again, circumferential treatment of the thigh. Watch. Watch this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So there's a body press. Body flex, and the thigh is trained circumferentially. Hamstrings, quads, adductor and abductor muscles. Abs. And of course, as in almost every move, the upper torso, pecs, etc. And then if you really want to sprint, do that too on Pentamix. And 
And I'm doing a little lift with each one of those. So I'm up to about 200 stride strokes a minute. With, without really too much work, I can go on doing that movement for a couple of minutes, have many times. And, but I couldn't, you know, I couldn't run a, a quarter mile at 45 seconds, which, 43 seconds, which I think is the world record. I think when you sprint whole body wise, when you get a lot of muscles into a lot of muscle mass into sprints, you can go longer. I'm convinced that nobody has said it in the literature, but that's because they never do anything that's not standard. Back to this one. And you're bringing this arm down. Try to be graceful about it. <laughs> I know I'm not balletic, but. Uh, I really try to be. Now straighten out your back. And I'll put your biceps on the uh, cereal box. You know, they never put a fitness guy on the cereal box anyhow. It's always an athlete. The athletes are usually fit but not as often as fit as guys who don't play to win, but just play to, for the fun of exercise and the fun of health and performance, all kinds of performance. I don't even know how long this tape is going to take. This camera has been laying fallow for years and I just brush the dust off and put a battery on there. It looks like the red light's still on, so I'm, I'm willing to talk to you as long as you're willing to listen. Scissors. Can you learn? By the way, on Panics, the whole chapter of the book is devoted to something I call Panics Speak, which is the whole book, you have the whole language devoted to this technique. And I think you'll find it amusing. Well, maybe you'll find it amusing. But it's a way of it's like talking about something that's so alien vis-a-vis -vis, uh, standard practices in the art of exercise, which get getting entirely too standard, too prosaic, too unimaginative, and too non-adventuresome to suit me. I don't know how you feel about it, but. Uh, that has to be one of the factors that's keeping our numbers down in this country in terms of gross national fitness drop. I hope that wind isn't blowing my voice into the next county. Although a lot of people would say that's where it belongs. I can tell you that no matter how hard I work at this, even if I get into various runs and the arms are bar, I don't I don't get really very fast heart rates and nobody will after training for a while because I think the reason is and I'm, you know it's not been proven yet but when you have a lot of muscles that are aerobically trained working together that's the most efficient cooperative venture with the circulation that you can have so that the, the tough kind of run of heart work comes from trying to pump enough blood into your, your thighs and legs uh, to get you to run fast miles into a limited amount of musculature, in other words. Uh, I think that the heart tries harder and harder to do it. I think the heart doesn't try quite so much when the work is shared among many muscles, meaning a, a big volume, because I don't care what the names of the muscles are, but a big volume of muscle. We try to make the, the movements we know what muscles they engage, but we're, we're interested in making the movements doable, enjoyable, um, extendable, and that's critical, you know, so that this is an open system, and I want it to be perceived as such by everybody who buys it. That's why a newsletter or something like that to say, hey, we got a new move for you, guy uh, or gal. Uh, this one was discovered by uh, one, of our, one of our users out in, in uh, Pocatello, Idaho, or something. Um, I, I think that's the thing that has to happen. It's an open system. People are apt to be inventive with it. 
And that's exactly what we want. But the nice thing about it is that, you know, I, I talk about stiffness and, and flex, flexibility, which I don't own. My flexibility was still very good on, on, the, uh, on the charts, for somebody my age especially. But I can tell you that my flexibility is about 100% better than it was before I started panics. And that's what's critical. I can't compare with Jane Fonda, who can bend over and you know, do, a, do a pretzel thing you know, at not the youngest age in the world, which is you know, kind of phenomenal. But I'm male, and I, uh, I got the wrong kind of body structure for being pretzel flexible. Uh, but I think, insofar as the good Lord would like me to have it, I get it on, on this kind of, uh, we call it strength flex. Strength, endurance, flexibility programs. All the moves get all three things. And, and I think that has a, uh, an aesthetic value simply because uh, it, make, it, it makes short shrift of exercise and gives most people more fitness factors than they're even looking for. You know, most people say, well, I ran enough, I, I had a, a, a target heart rate for 20 minutes, and the Nordic track says I'm finished. And I can, get, I can lose 18 pounds in 12 weeks. Horse feathers. Yeah, with several bouts of starvation, but, but not through the kind of caloric loss that I watch on, on infomercials and on two, you know, two minute spots, whatever. It's just not true, that's all. If you want to lose things, gain things, you, gotta, you, gotta, you, you can't beat physiology and you've got to stick with math. And those are the facts of life which. Uh, have sort of kept me um, within some kind of uh, le legitimate statements about this device over the past 10 years. I don't tend to change that. I can't promise anybody uh, what's impossible or what I don't even think is likely for them. What some of the what some of the sellers are doing is saying, well, you can use them about 1,000 calories an hour. <laughs> Maybe one out of 100 of their users. You know, most of the people that can, that can do a thousand calories an hour are not going to be messing around with Nordic track, I'll tell you, because there's, there's much more graceful ways of doing it. Or, I'm not pointing to Nordic track, but I'm saying uh, even, even some of the, the body rocking, you know, health rider group, uh, they all leave something out. Like the health rider says, no jar. That's right. Can you get through a gravitational field without jarring? I don't know how. Uh -huh. Even walking. Is, is, is some kind of a jar. If you do all your exercise with no jar, what protects you from the, from the real world? Really. At least that's the way I think about it. So what we do here is a middle of the road thing. So while running can jar you, it jars less if you use up some of the force involved in the jar by doing strength work of the upper torso. It's a win-win-win situation. And I haven't been able to find anything better for the last 10 years. Although I've continued to expand uh, the philosophy uh, of, of this modality. Okay, well, I don't know if I got any pictures or not. But uh, and even if I did, they're probably, probably terrible. And my dog looks at me like, ooh, you know, he thinks they. People from the funny farm are approaching rapidly. Yeah, we're recording now. Uh, Jeff, I looked at that tape I did uh, the other day, and I, I wasn't too happy with that. Uh, I may have made it a little too difficult. If you're not really into training right now, some of those moves might be a little difficult. I'm going to have a lot of competition with the airplanes and whatnot, but uh, there's a few things I want to say to protect you from uh, instant dislike of, of this exercise. One is that you start at your own rate, and that's what's beautiful about it, because the ease of entry is guaranteed. So anybody, including an 88-year-old lady or man, can start out at their, with their own aerobic strength and, and flexibility capacities, uh, whatever they are. Uh, but I, I want you to know that what a little movement like, for instance, a kick, and I can't do it because I've lowered this 
for my eldest grandson Jeremy, who's going to who's going to show you some the way he moves on this machine. I had to lower the bar, and so I can't do much. But I can show you that these kicks, for example, are not single exercises. They evolve, and we use the word move evolution to in, in our um, Panex speak chapter that I'm going to send you. Uh, so that a, a kick can be a plain kick. It can vary in any number of ways, including range of motion, as I mentioned before, uh, tempo, and the amount of resistance you think in uh, to, to the movement. But you can also precede each kick, for example, by a knee flex, which is essentially a hamstring motion, like this. I'm not good at this little bar level, but Maybe Jeremy will try some of those movements. I'm going to be put him on. But I want to emphasize the point that about that ease of entry guarantee. The other thing is that the machine isn't too easy for anybody. I don't care what elite athlete uh, you put on this gadget. There's some thing uh, he can't do. Uh, at least today. So anyhow, uh, kids love this thing. I'm not sure I know why. Maybe it, maybe it looks like a jungle gym or something to them. But Jeremy is, is uh, 13 and far beyond the, the time of jungle gyms, I can tell you. Um, and he, on and off, has been using Panex for a couple of years anyhow. And I pushed him this morning because it's nice and bright and sunny uh, to uh, help us out. So I, I want to talk to you while he's doing these things. Maybe about what he's doing, maybe about something entirely different. Jer, go ahead. How about how about doing trying that level out to see what what kicks look like at the bar? Right. You see now he's doing a little bit of hop because he's aerobically capable of doing that. Your eighty year old lady obviously would not start this way. He's even doing the thing I just mentioned, that hamstring uh, knee flex which really makes it uh, kind of a circumferential uh, treatment of, of the leg and thigh from, from the word go. Jer, do those uh, one-arm squats. Uh, now see, with a, with a movement like that, which is an alternate pull-up, and almost anybody can do some version of it. You can do it slow, you can do it uh, without getting your butt down as far as Jeremy does. Um, you can get up on your toes, which converts all these exercises, incidentally, uh, into uh, calf exercises as well as the other leg and thigh uh, muscles. Uh, that's good, Jer. Um, do, do some jogging at the, at the bar. At the bar. At the bar. Yeah. Now, now try to add a little bit of side leaning to that, so so Jeff can see. You know, even exaggerate. Try to strengthen one arm and then the other arm as you go. Great. Now that doesn't look hard. I got to tell you, he's working at about uh, 12 to 15 mets when he does that uh, on a steady state basis, which is about two and a half times what the American College of Sports Medicine is recommending that we do as as. Uh, fitness-oriented uh, intensity. Six METs is what they recommend. And six METs is a, a, about the power equivalent, or metabolic equivalent, of what you do walking four, and a, four or four and a half miles an hour. Well, I got to tell you, this beats the hell out of that. And Jeremy has been known to run for, for long minutes. Can you, can you turn to an um, uh, underhand grip? And, and even ex and, and try to exaggerate as you jog. Now pull your legs, do big kickbacks this time. Make it a sprint. Go, go faster. I'm not wearing, not that fast, but wear me out just looking at you. Now you can see Jer's uh, almost five feet tall. And so you can see how that gadget works uh, on, on a teenage kid. Or a woman, like Millie, is about an inch or so taller than Jeremy, and she works out now. Since you guys got interested, she's, she's working out every day on Panex. 
and doing extraordinarily well, by the way, even noticing difference in her, in her musculature. Mostly I didn't, I, I, I think the, the kind of uh, stuff I spontaneously did the other day, and that's, that's probably you know, one of the uh, hardships uh, and difficulties related to this kind of spontaneous, off-the-cuff presentation. But I thought I conveyed uh, the impression that, um, that what I did was, was very easy, and anybody could do that. Well, they can't. They can't. And that's the best part of, of the equipment and the, and the technique, is that it is open-ended, that it doesn't make any difference. Uh, if, you, if you do moves, for example, uh, that you can do 10 a minute, that's quite fine, and you may be able to do 15, 20, or 30 at some time in the future. The point is not to rule yourself out and put the machine in the attic just because you know, the, the first, the first uh, attempts don't result in a flaming love affair with the gadget. Gary, do something else you want to do. Go, do some stuff at the bar. I know those, those arms are high for you, but can you, can you do that, that uh, jogging and, and push-up stuff. See, you know, he does those so that, you know, his elbows almost meet in the back, but he has, he has flexibility that he hasn't even used yet, so. You see, that makes him enormously tricep strong, uh, as well as, as um, you know, leg strong, and makes him better at pony league than, than almost any other kind of preparation would do. I think so, you know. Um, Jeremy's also an expert at the use of hand weights, which he's been doing since he's about one year old, believe it or not. He was born very close to the time heavy hands were, so. Uh, he's not the most diligent exerciser in the world, but, but kids are, are never. He's into sports. Uh, but, but more than other kids, is willing to uh, gather the effects of fitness insofar as they, they enhance his athletic abilities. Uh, what, else have, what else have you done? Uh, other thing, oh, do that stretch that I just showed you. This is one Jeff was interested. Now do it as a slow move, sag all the way down. Yeah, now pull all the way up. Get your arms in front of the bar. Way up, way up. <laughs> it's killing them, but I'll tell you, it makes you feel wonderful because the uh, extension of the back that you, see he's doing like it as a repetition exercise. Now actually there's a certain amount of aerobic capacity that comes from that kind of movement even though it looks slow as uh, seven years itch. What do you feel, anything? Mm -hmm. What do you feel? Stretching. Back stretching. But you know, you, but you're also doing some. You, don't you feel you're doing some quad work mm -hmm. when you get up to that extreme? Now, if I asked you to hold it for 30 seconds now, that'd be a problem, wouldn't it? Stay, try. Stay, I say I'm timing you. How's it feel so far? It's sort of getting a little. Tough. It's killing me just looking at you. Okay, okay, okay. Sag back. Very good. Now, can you can you? Do you do ever, ever do the scissors on the on the arms where you go scissors and you go this way and that way? Oh, you know what I mean. Uh, you 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 put one foot forward and then the other foot forward. Yeah, but but make a much bigger stride and go slower. Slower, ah, baby. Slow. See now that that works your tries, but you see you'll get to an aerobic pitch even at that slow tempo, and that's what's beautiful about the system. Because going fast at anything is what causes most people to injure. Do you ever do any lateral leg raises while you're at the at the arms, Jer? Yes. Such as you know, going into a squat and then lifting your leg to the side as you come up. Squat, what? lift, lift Should one. I have keep my arms like this. Go down and as you come up, raise the yeah. The, now the other way. Now I'll try to exaggerate that movement a little more. Best. You stand back so you don't kick the, the arm. Very good. See, now I do, he's doing abductor work when he does that. And it's, it's very useful in this so-called circumferential treatment. Um, now, Jer, 
go up and do some, some simple squats at the, at the bar. I want to talk about those for a little. Because this might be a, uh, an introductory movement for many people. Looks simple, is, but the fact is, you're doing a lot of quad work and you're, you're changing it from reps like you would do with a big weight on your back trying to do squats as a weightlifter with something that when you share the work with the arms, he makes that an aerobic steady state uh, exercise. And, you know, he's 13 so his t testosterones are not, are not flowing yet, but when they do, that make him a very muscular young guy. And, and without, and without uh, resorting to heavy lifting, which essentially doesn't produce those valuable mitochondria and capillaries in, in, in between and in the muscle fibers, which are so, so crucial uh, to being able to, to work hard in the strength mode. That's, that's what we're trying to do. Now switch, just while you're doing it, switch your hand grip so you're going in an overhand. Now, now constantly pull down and resist the, resist, as you squat, resist it. Can you do that? That's it. Now he's getting a bang for, two bangs for his buck. He's getting some work, arm work and leg work, both on the up and down strokes. I was trying to demonstrate that. I don't think I did it well the other day, but uh, it's something to keep in mind. Uh, but you see, if somebody starting out wanted to simply do that as, as their beginning gambit with this kind of technique, it'd be perfectly all right, and I guarantee you, it would work more muscles than uh, any five pieces of equipment that are out there it's, that sell single movement strategies, which I don't believe in, as, as, you, as you know. Now do that same thing with a kick al alternate. Kick, right, kick. Now I'll ask you to kick higher. Kick, and go slower. See, in this, that's the other thing, the product of the work is about the same whether you're going fast or slow. That means that you can switch options from, from strength preponderance to, end, to cardiovascular uh, or endurance preponderance just by, go, by changing the tempo. Just by changing the tempo. Uh, anything else you like? Do, do some running at the bar. High kicks, high, high uh, kicks, oh, do, do the kicks, that's right, do, see when you're doing the kicks, runs, there's a whole chapter in the, in the text on running, the five, ten different ways, which all, now, now are you, are you feeling that in your arms? Yeah, sure, alternate. So, alternate, so you're doing like a one arm pull up on each side as you do it. Yeah. And, and, and that means a little bit of side leaning. Side leg, yeah. Favor that side, the alternate side each time. Now you see, he's really getting some good bicep and tricep work. The bicep work comes in the contraction as he pulls himself up. Uh, the bicep work. The tricep work comes in uh, called eccentric effort, in which he retards the speed of his body. He's airborne for a, for a fraction of a second there, and it retards slows the return of his body to the, to the ground. So he's getting tricep back of the arm and bicep work at the same time. There's also another muscle that's involved called Brachialis anticus, which is a very important muscle. And it is the difference between chin-ups done in the, in the underhand and overhand uh, technique. One way you, you develop the Brachialis anticus and the other way you don't. It, it's a, a, of academic interest, um, but probably uh, very practical. How's that going? Now, now switch from that to your alternate um, pull-ups and squats. Yeah. Straighten that arm all the way out. See, he's getting great range of motion when he does it. He pulls one arm down beside him just to increase the total amount of work in the up-down. But, but that, and then, now get up on your toes a little bit. Very good. Super. Excellent. I have looked at this camera to see what that looks like. See if you're on, on the film, you are right in the middle. Where do you feel that, Jer? Right in my quad. 
not, not much in your arms. Can you think it so that you can make the arms work harder? Can you consciously do that? Yeah. 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 See, uh, and that's an important part of the system. Uh, because doing something that looks identical with something else, you can be varying uh, enormously the amount of contribution of arm, leg, and trunk is involved in almost all these. Can you do that while adding a kick on the opposite side? <laughs> now you got up. This is something he's trying for the first time. Sure, well, I'll tell you, start over again. And as you go down, kick on the opposite, kick the opposite side of the, of the arm side. Uh, kick, no. No, as you go down, kick. All right. Ah, you got it, baby. Wonderful. Go, go down. Down. See, now he's doing a very complicated exercise. When I start naming muscles, he's working biceps and triceps, he's working his abs, he's working his quads, he's working when he's up on his toe like this, he's working his calves, he's working his butt all the time, he's working his lats, uh, that great huge muscle uh, that gives us the wide back look and makes punchers hit hard as hell. Uh, now, he, he's not at his graceful best doing that, but it, think of it, it's the first time he's ever tried this movement. Okay, are we wearing you out here? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> All right. Um, I'll say a few more words, and then uh, we'll close this thing off. Um, I gotta show you that stretch again the way I do, because I, I imagine I can do it on this low. See, I do it with an underhand grip, and then the point is, is that I can do this as a, you call it, it's almost an isometric exercise, right, real. But you see, you can stay out here and up here as long as you want. But here I'm doing maybe five or six movements a minute, maybe less. There's even that slow movement is equivalent to what many people do when they're doing their aerobics in six, six minutes, that, 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 or 21 mLs as you prefer to call it. And, and, and my dog acknowledges the wisdom of my words by sneezing, which is our code. <coughs> I love this because I got such a, you know, brittle, kind of stiff musculature. This, this makes me feel loose. But again, the importance of this segment uh, was not uh, to put Jeremy in the movies, but, but really to uh, to understand that this gadget and this system uh, is a different thing for everybody that uses it. The fundamentals are there, but everybody will do their own variation on the theme, as it should be. Anyhow, thanks for listening.